be, you know, this could be the dream here. Could be. Could be I mean, dream, the big, uh, the big dough. Yeah, I do want to point out that all of these four racers have already gotten into the money. Um, we are giving uh, um, top four prizes here. So it's a two hundred dollar prize pool. Uh, first gets a hundred, second gets fifty dollars, and then we split twenty five dollars each to third and fourth place. So loser here is going to wind up with $25, uh, Squega getting $25. So Squega has now officially won money in a Condor, so congrats to Squega for that, as has all of these other racers. It's just not been totally nailed down on how much they win. All right, and we are off. We got Revelize on the left. Zypher, I guess there's a bit of stream lag there, um, is off as well. If Zypher makes it to the, uh, to the final Necro Dancer, you guys get to see Fat Cadence which is a real treat. <laughs> and there is a blood shop there. We're going to see if, oh, it looks like Revelize did some bad mapping, but maybe paid off. No, that's a protection charm. Not worth, not value. Ooh, look at that little uh, blood shop there. You can go straight up to uh, three damage if you want with your dagger, which is pretty nice. Yeah, I, th I think I'm taking both of those. Yeah, and uh, we see that there from, from Revelize. Now, I think Zypher found an apple somewhere. So you're seeing Zypher's got the uh, three heart containers full, whereas uh, Revelize is down two because you pay blood debt to get those items. Now, three bombs in a chest is pretty nice. Those three bombs could really matter coming into this boss fight here, considering how uh, Zypher does not have any bombs currently. But we'll see. She might find some bombs on this floor. And I doubt it. There's a trap door, and if you're racing, you're taking trap doors. Yeah, that's for and sure. Pretty uh it is pretty slow trap door fight though, because it is Congo. Um Oops. you never want to see Congo when you're trying to, you know, spend a million beats killing a, you know, wrangling a red dragon around or whatever. Um, could have actually potentially, um, <laughs> if you wanna go for uh really kind of cheeky strat um just exit the trap door immediately with that kind of teleportation <laughs> that's true yeah get just hammered by an enemy and you'll teleport probably somewhere in the boss arena especially since it's such an enormous arena the chance of you getting teleported there is quite high um you're actually uh, i believe you're guaranteed to be teleported oh. in the boss arena. i might be incorrect on that but um I I'm, I've, sure. I've used a kind of teleportation strats in bosses before, and it pretty consistently lands me somewhere in the uh, in the boss arena, as far as I know. All right, well, there you have it. I believe you. Uh, so this is one of the fastest weapons you can get in the game. It is a glass weapon, which means it does four damage at its base. Uh, but if you get hit, it breaks, and we saw a lot of that in last that last set. Oh. It um, breaks unless you have but, that kind of damage, like yep. the crown of teleportation. Crown of teleport. Zypher so Zypher lost. lucked out there, having that crown of telly uh, actually teleport her to the... Oh, this arena. Wow. It's so tempting. It's so tempting. Find Revelize darkness. is really thinking about it. <laughs> Find darkness and take it all. That's what you want. Because, yeah, that was a lot of good stuff. Or maybe leave the um, torch, but... Like, that is a Glass good rocket, as we call it, the, uh, you know, the rapier courage combination. Which uh, would have made this boss One of the bad. potentially fastest, yeah, one of the potentially fastest uh, builds in the game, but also arguably one of the most dangerous. Easily one of the spookiest, yes. Um, and that's because of uh, Zone 3, which Cypher is now hitting. Um, lots of enemies drop ice on death, and if you are, if you have that rocket, that rapier courage combination, you are immediately stepping onto that dropped ice and sliding. Uh, yeah. And the courage is not going to protect you from the beat after that, after you finish that slide. Oh, broken glass. Oh, nice. Heads up bomb play there. That was really smart by Revelize because uh, that broken glass with the every beat moving enemies means that if you're not quick to react, you might have, uh, you might be dead. Okay. Yeah, thankfully, Zyper, that Zyper, shop Zyper, having a replacement weapon just ready and waiting for him. Yeah, that um, was lucky. Because uh, getting back to the glass shard might have been a little bit of a tricky endeavor. Absolutely. And I do want to point out that the reason why a glass rapier is um, bad with ice is the same reason why a gold rapier courage is good with uh, gold, where you're going to land on the beat of the thing you killed, or on the space of the thing you killed. 
And so it's sort of the same reason that it happens, but it's good for one and pretty bad for the other. Yeah, exactly. I uh, The other thing I wanted to point out with rapiers, for those who aren't super familiar with the game, uh, is when you when you do that dash, that lunge that you see uh, Zypher doing in this boss fight, it actually does double damage. So it would do four naturally, but then because it's glass, but then it's gonna do double damage, which, oh my goodness. Zypher, bold decision. Uh, getting an obsidian broadsword out of the boss chest and opting to stick with glass rapier. That is I extremely think, um, bold. I think, yeah, I think the broadsword is the right choice here. He's got a pretty, or she's got a pretty substantial lead here. And um, additionally, she's got the uh, the gluttony charm, which doesn't do you a ton of good when you got glass. It's fine, but you know you're probably gonna find some food here. I would I would want to have a safer weapon that's gonna guarantee uh, if I get hit, I'm still gonna be alive, and in fact might be able to get a whole bunch of heart containers. Uh, but yeah, yeah but as I was I'm... saying, the uh, the rapier when it's glass is gonna do eight damage on a lunge. Oh, well, there we go. Safer weapon for Zypher. There Finding you go. Obsidian Rapier. Yes. Also one of the fastest uh, items. So this does three damage when it's fully charged, and then six on a lunge. Oh, man. Yeah, good thing, you know. Good oh, things. no. Revelize oh, going down a black oh. bat. Rip. Let's get that instant replay on that. See exactly what went down there. Um, I ultimately missed it. I think I need to speed up my stream here so that it... Let's get that replay going. Oh, yep, that black bat didn't see it there until it was too late. Attacked the harpy instead, and down it goes. Uh, that's a shame. Yeah, Zypher really lucky, uh, lucky timing on that find. That Obsidian Rapier almost immediately taking a hit after swapping to Obsidian. Uh, if, it, if it'd still been glass, um, I think that would have just uh, been lights out right there. That could have been GG, and ultimately, uh, Zypher's still not in a great spot. Did get that little pixie kiss there, one of the few enemies that actually has a positive effect. I am so spooked right now for Zypher, though. Nice use of that that rapier to just plow on through. Going with the... Uh, oh, okay. Um, yeah, using a heart transplant, I, we, I see this a lot, where um, you know people are like, oh, I'll just pop heart transplant you know, at a place where I know what I'm doing, you know, just speed it up, but... Um, then you know maybe rushing a little too hard and getting off the usual, uh, you know the usual routine and yeah. that 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 dead ringer um, procedure was anything but standard. I no, it was very not, not but it was anything like that. ultimately very safe uh, considering, which is good, and I think that has a lot to do with the high damage weapon because uh, that could have been real bad. But when you're just one shotting those mini bosses that pop out, it's totally fine. And now this is the final boss, the Necrodancer. We got uh, Zypher making short work of the Necrodancer here. Um, yeah, Necrodancer is actually ultimately not the big uh, issue, sort of uh, stopping point of the game, even though he is the final boss. That uh, usually is, that title is given to Deadringer, uh, who Zypher did just kill before Dead there. Ringer, even, or even just 4-3 sometimes. 4-3 uh, yeah. floor generation can be really, really cruel sometimes. Yes, it can be quite brutal. And that was in that, um, in that round we had earlier with the complete bloodshed, that definitely was a big part of it. Um, I think it was our third round, yeah. In any case, yeah, we had a, a, a brutal zone four. GG. Uh, Caden Dorian, I think it's just fat Cadence. <laughs> it's just fat Cadence. So... By the way, we have uh, a bunch of events coming up. Uh, tomorrow, we're going to be doing... Uh, I'm going to be doing the, the English recast of uh, Necrodancer Week the World. I think that's what it's called. Week the World, is that right? Yeah, that's that's correct. Week the World. And it's actually an a event hosted by the Japanese community. There's a pretty sizable Necrodancer Japanese community. Um, and we get to intermix sometimes, uh, which is nice, because they're actually amazing at this game, which is great. And so, um, yeah, we're gonna. I'm gonna be doing the English restream of their cast of the sort of final showcase of Necrodancer Week the World. That is tomorrow, I think, starting at seven, might be eight, or something along those lines. Uh, and then next week is Christmas, and the week after that is New Year's. So we're actually gonna just not do anything for those two days, which I think is fair. It's gonna be hard to get anybody. Uh, for that no anyways. necro Christmas parties. No, we talked about it a little, but it's like uh, 
people are gonna be real busy. I'm not fat shaming. There's no shame there, it's just a fat cadence. There's no shame with fat cadence. Fat cadence is great. Additionally, um, the week following New Year's is going to be our December, even though it's in January, Conduit. Uh, and Conduit is our Crypto Necrodancer Universal Invite Tournament. It is a tournament for our sort of rookie league, our sort of uh, newer racers. And we actually often have a lot of racers come up through Conduit uh, to start partaking in Condor. Uh, most notable of which is probably my co-host here, <laughs> Spooty, who made his first appearance in, I, it was our first conduit, right? Yeah, that's right. And uh, completely destroyed and has been destroying everybody since. So <laughs> it's awesome. Not everybody. Not everybody. I think Mud Joe's got your number sometimes, but uh, ultimately, yeah, it's been, it's been oh, really awesome. Oh man, okay, I, I, I am not a fan of the of both of these racers blood shopping strategies <laughs> i mean glass has been a little bit of a spicy thing for uh, it's it's not it's not the matter of taking glass it's the matter of that ring of charisma is on sale and oh. if you take the ring and the glass whale you're actually coming out half a heart ahead that is a very good point oftentimes the i feel like the ring of charisma is more phasing than the ring of phasing and you just don't see it because it's pretty crappy usually but you're right, it has its uses, and one of those is the blood shop, where uh, it, everything becomes half a heart cost. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty easy to overlook that, though, because that is such a niche, you know, like, how often in runs are you finding Ring of Charisma, like, before or at, at the blood shop? It's, and it's paired easy with an item that you want to get being completely that's honest. expensive. So, yeah. Well, Zypher, I think, uh, waiting out, seeing what... Uh, or Revelize, uh, Revelize uh, yeah. finds in the purple chest to decides that they want to, Interesting. That she wants to check the black instead. I it does pay off though. I'd say Glass Cat is much better than Glass Whale. But I don't know about losing out on the uh, Freeze spell though. Freeze spell is like top shelf. It's really, really yeah, strong. Exactly. Especially when you have a glass build. I would definitely have taken uh, Freeze over that. Um. Okay, now maybe I miss... Uh, Misinterpreted what I saw there. Oh, but, uh, speaking of glass, rip. Oh, yeah, that's rough. Oh, what a bomb, though. That bomb saved it, just like we saw in the last run there. I, I only caught a glimpse of it. Um, I must have been looking at the right time, but um, I don't remember wrong, but wasn't that a free ring of regen down there that pulled the racers passed up on? Oh, I, was there I a bomb trap? Thought next I to saw it? an explosive mushroom next oh, right. to the uh, Shrine of Blood. Turn. <laughs> <laughs> and as we said in, I think, two races ago, maybe last race, Freeze Spell plus Regen is an extremely strong combination. Oh, yeah. And, uh, yeah. Rip that for Revelize. And, of course, Zypher kind of needing a Ring of Regen right now with the two heart containers. Needing something, anyways, because uh, Zypher's build is pretty dire right now. And uh, not uh, quite dire. as dire as that bat, but hey... <laughs> Love it. You're a real funny man, you know. What can I say? <laughs> <laughs> this is my first rodeo. Now, is Zypher gonna eat that? Yeah, for full health and keep the gluttony Ooh, charm. Yeah, Zypher, is Zypher getting hit by that, that, you know, that sneaky armadillo just waiting for, for her to come back out. <laughs> just frozen in some kind of weird time stasis. I haven't quite figured out the physics of the uh, secret shops, but there's something going on there. Because it was definitely rolling. And yet, it just kind of was rolling in its own spot. By the way, uh, Revelai is picking up one of my favorite weapons, the uh, Jewel Dagger. Definitely one of the better specialty daggers. Ooh, really tough situation for Zypher with that narrow choke getting closed on both sides, but it handles it really nicely. Yeah, very nice. And I will point out that Revelai has managed to pick up uh, a compass, which you don't often see just the compass, um, but it is really, really valuable, especially in Zone 3. The compass obviously points you towards the exit like compasses do in a lot of roguelikes. And uh, yeah, yeah um, you're seeing zone three. It's really helping out here. And you, you, you can't underestimate the, uh, the handiness of that little purple arrow. I mean, it is one of the prime reason that Dorian as, as a character is so fast. Yeah, Dorian's ridiculously fast. Yeah, because he starts with that. I mean, he's got a lot of other great value items, but the fact that you've got the ability to dig anything with the uh, with the pickaxe and then having the, the... Oh man, there is a... There's a clear potion right there. Please. You can just dig it open. 
You're bombing. You have glass. <laughs> I make that mistake more often than I would care to. Oh, do and there that. was a black chest there. It could have been something really crazy. Could have been a frost dagger, which would have made the old uh, fun little wombo combo there. With a free spell. It's all right. Yeah, which, uh, speaking of which, we were just talking about Dorian. The uh, the world record Dorian run is actually a frost dagger free spell run. Oh, I didn't know that the free spell was involved. I knew it was frost dagger, but uh, that's kind of amazing. So uh, the meta is resetting for frost dagger now? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not quite sure I would say that, but... Um, oh, I mean, God, that sounds it's horrible. Proof that, it's proof that the frost dagger is a pretty strong contender for one of the strongest female weapons in the game. I think a lot of that credit goes to the fact that it's Doreen with the curse leaping, though. I think that that helps because you do a lot of standing. Oh, and um, Zypher checking that black chest when we get to see what it is, and it is a karate gi. But Zypher having the other spe so we've now mentioned all three of the specialty daggers. That is a uh, dagger of phasing, which is the best, in my opinion, of all the specialty daggers. And I think it's kind of hard to argue that. It's it really, really good. It used to be, um, I, I remember the good old days, uh, early access when it was completely busted and did three damage yep and it was just absurdly powerful one of those oversights from the game dev ryan clark where it's just like it's a dagger probably needs some damage and it's a specialty dagger and we're gonna give them all a ton of damage and it's like no this thing is ridiculous and when you get that third damage by picking up some kind of damage up with dagger phasing it's absurd it just one shots all the bosses pretty much yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's trust me, you don't need to tell crazy. me about the uh, the strength of damage ups on uh, dagger phasing. That's what I went out in a uh, Necrodancer World Cup to was um, I went with oh, a yeah. glass cap with the uh, glass jaw and stake went with dagger of phasing with glass jaw. And it just did so much more work for him than my glass cat. Yeah, I mean, it makes enemies pretty much trivial. Any of the riders get insta shot. This is okay. Whoa, Cypher with a really nasty swarm situation. <laughs> I love that no goo. Back to the Someone shop. explain the mechanics that occurred there where the goo planted in the shop because he did damage to a golem on the other side of the level. This game's That's breaking all the rules. Works. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Gooms are, uh, you know, kind of weird. They, uh, they, they just kind of, you know, send the goo to you telepathically or something. I'm not sure. Yeah, some kind of, yeah, it makes sense when you hit the ghoulum because it's like he spurts out goo or something. I don't know. Okay, Zypher. Just throw it. You can throw it. Okay, you got it. Yeah, that was a little rough. But, oh, get, uh, doing the nice throw prep before um, entering the Necrodancer. You know, saving a little bit of time. Although okay. that said, immediately doubling back for the dagger, so I'm not actually saving all that much yeah, time. Yeah, you don't need that Oh, and dagger. no bombs on Zypher's oh. side, so... And it's way too little too some... late. Revelize has already got this one in the bank. So Revelize is going to tie this up 1-1. One, one. Might be going the distance here. We got it guaranteed at least two matches. Remaining, this is first to three. It's a best of five. There's our uh, Fat Cadence making another appearance. It's too good. Sometimes when I see the Cadence sprite... I think it looks like it has like a baseball cap on with like a little tuft of hair, like it's backwards. There's a little tuft of hair coming through that hole in the baseball cap. And when it's fat, it looks particularly hilarious, I think. All right. Countdown is going to be on in a sec. They just gotta change up the seeds and then we're gonna get things going. Thanks again for everybody for sticking around. I realize this has been a uh, little bit longer of our tournaments. Um, we weren't totally sure. This is a totally brand new uh, format for our tournaments, so we weren't really sure how long this was going to go. But, I mean, it's been good matches the whole night. These best of fives are great. Uh, really high-level races. That Squega Dion match was phenomenal. And now we're seeing uh, Zypher Revelize go toe-to-toe -to -toe here, back and forth. GG's though. Yeah, it's been a, it's been a pretty in, like pretty intense uh, you know pretty, pretty intense uh, tournament here. I mean, you know, I I'm sure like a lot of other people, I just kind of you know I I looked at these names and I'm like, okay, you know, oh I I know these people have been around for a really long time, and I kind of you know I'm, my gut was to just say you know they'll probably take it, but uh, so far it's been anything but that. I mean, Squiggy going out to Dion is. Uh, a little bit surprising, you know, because Squiga I know is a super solid racer, Dion's a little bit of a newcomer, but um, 
newcomers are showing that they uh, definitely have what it takes. Yeah, it's interesting that it's sort of that setup parale uh, parallels this one a little too, where zypher has been around forever and uh, Revelize is, I mean, reasonably new in the um, in the scene. And so if Zypher goes down to Revelize, we're going to see a, a more of a dominance of the, of the newer racers. Seal. All right, well, we've got a ring here, so this is going to be Owen. Oh, if that was Ring of Mana, <laughs> that would have been the most ridiculous shop ever. Not that Bomb Mana is particularly good, but just two spells and a Ring of Mana would have been something else. But it was not. It was a Ring of Regen, which is still unbelievably good. Yeah, so like Revelize is in about, a great spot. Like we were just talking about with the, uh, I mean, the Ring of Mana Freeze being so, or not, Ring of Regen Freeze being yeah. so strong. Uh, it applies pretty much just as well to uh, Ring of Regen Shield. Yep. Although That's I a, have pretty much a that... free shield spell every floor. I have heard, oh boy. Oh, that got real spicy real fast for Revelize. <laughs> there was a lot of enemies all of a sudden. Uh, I was going to say, I have heard, though, that Mana Freeze is quite good. Word on the street. Quite good. Mana so. Freeze and Mana Shield are both uh, pretty good, and uh, they're good. they're particularly good when you get both of them together. I, I, yeah. I have a thing or two I can say about that. Yeah, I've, I've heard that uh, you can go pretty fast with that. So. All right. Uh, Zypher... Almost not checking the chests, which would have been Interesting pretty... choice from Zypher to go for the purple chest. Um, I, I think she's I, trying to get rid of her uh, ring, if anything. Yes, yeah, I'm not sure I like that call. I mean, um, you know, maybe get rid of the ring, but you're likely still on a one damage steer. It's not exactly the place you want to be. Needs to use that transmute spell, too. Just uh, found a, an item they didn't, that she didn't want to take and just left it without transmuting so. it. And I'd say that... That'd be given... Oh, uh, yeah. If you get transmuted, I, I think it. A, yeah, I think a lot of runners uh, tend to forget to give uh, transmute spells some love. Oh, yeah. That's me to a T. I... I forget every time I see Becoming, I forget I it. I don't know. Though, remembering uh, for that... Uh, Obsidian Torch and getting a Titanium Longsword out of it, so fixing the weapon situation. Still no ring, though. Yeah. Also, there was a uh, pretty phenomenal highlight. I think it was Rat. Might have been Oblivion. I don't know if you saw it, but it was the uh, looking for a particular ring, finds Becoming in the boss chest, and then leaves it and immediately realizes had a Transmute spell. <laughs> Just did not take it. Yeah, really becoming is another one of those things like you know like i was just talking about with the uh, charisma and how you know you just kind of gloss over it because you never see it you never use it it's it's always just you know you just see it and you're you just kind of internally groan and you're like oh becoming yeah and, and then, then you, have... you realize you know 20 seconds later wait that was actually the one situation where finding becoming is like the best thing in the world yeah or and when you say realize 20 seconds later for me it's chat reminds me immediately <laughs> and i just like cry inside i like never get ring of wonder for that reason i'm so bad at it all right well some really good pressure from these racers who both have pretty mediocre weapons but are, are pushing quite hard i think a lot of that has to do with uh the way they're sort of oh those bounce traps though yes yeah, i'm getting kind of trolled by uh by ring of uh, darkness and we are neck and neck here look at how close this is now, yeah, I was going to say, in terms of darkness, I typically, if I don't have a weapon, I'm going to keep darkness through Zone 2. Because you Zone 2 has a lot of maps where you actually go through shops, and so you might as well grab a bunch of free items on your way. I feel like that's generally quite valuable. Very close. Looks like, um, by my watch, I think Zypher is pulling ahead here. Mild lead here, though. Oh, that uh, fear except uh, taking a ideal. while. Yep actually taking time to transmute one of the consumables so not actually uh oh, did hit no. the stairs after revelize instead and i oh the telemonkey right back to the start ah uh, dang it that sucks all right and that actually does uh they're both entering this boss room at the exact same time um, like Zypher technically uh... doing the correct move by coming in from the top, generally, just sort of as very generally strats. Oh, and Zypher finally there getting off is. that Ring of Shadows uh, with a really nice replacement yeah, ring. ring. It's, the, it's the easy mode ring again. Easy uh, mode ring. ring Although it's only going to... Oh! What did I... Oh, no! Just lost track Zypher. of the beat. 
holy watering a golem and oh, trying to attack the dragon on the next no, beat. Oh, not like this. <laughs> and Let's uh, get that replay here. Getting stunned by a dragon on ooze. That is six hearts of damage right there. Yep, a lot of damage. Uh, does get reduced by two hearts, but still four hearts is enough to kill. Yeah, I think I had chain mail, uh, if I'm correct. Chain which helm was shin guards. By, uh... Chain helm shin guards. Had all of that, and it still was an insta dunk. Yeah, that's still not going to be enough. Wow. I mean, that, that is the single highest damage you can take in one hit, is a is a dragon stomp while standing on ooze. Um, there are a few other yeah, enemies that will the, other mini bosses, the like keepers. the green banshee. Oh, well, the shopkeeper, yeah. Those yeah. Are the shopkeepers. <laughs> I don't know if they really you know. count, but yeah. The shopkeepers are kind of a special case. I'm not sure if I, if I count them. That's fair. But yeah, also running two damage is bad. We've uh, said that time and again. You want to get that th that critical three damage threshold. It just slows everything down so so much. And uh, we're seeing that here. You gotta hit those golems three times. Uh, it's a lot harder to kill the oh. skeletons. Earthquake scrolls a nice find. That's gonna make for a nice safe dead ringer. Yeah, Oblivion, Oblivion promptly reminding me that I'm wrong. That that giant black wind mage on you <laughs> will do more damage. But it's um. Yeah, I, if there was giant... Oh, not using Earthquake. Or using Earthquake there. Okay, that's fair. Honk the bells first. It's a little slower, but it's safer. Well, it's not even really that much safer. Keeping the bomb spell, probably to make for some safe uh, spawns here. So for those who are new to the speedrunning of this, this boss fight, the way it kind of works is your two phases. First one is this thing called butt puzzles, where you have to jump on those buttons butt being short for buttons and then uh, that is the official name by the way they are officially butt puzzles yeah and uh and then that unlocks the stage but as each you step on each butt puzzle it um bombs the stage and releases the enemies on it now there's a particular number which i don't know that <laughs> that is the total number of spawns you can have in this arena six seven i don't know but the guys on the stage count and so you want to bomb as little of the stage as possible to leave guys up on the stage so that it's a nice easy fight. And so that strat you saw there with the bombs made it a little bit easier than if you were to do the butt puzzles, plus it's faster. And that's for Re Revelize a, a win right there, Death by Zypher, getting stomped on by yep, a blue we dragon. We are seeing so many deaths to uh, unexpected blue triggers. Um, Squaga, I believe it was, with the, uh, the death the of ogre. broadsorting. Um, you know, with hitting with the edge of the broadsword range, that oh, ogre. Oh yeah, that's true. He also got trying to. He also got a uh, ogred with the phasing. Is that not? I'm pretty sure that was Squaga as well, um, where he was standing on goo and he walked along the goo yeah. and got got ogred as well. So that's Revelize going up two to one on Zypher. Will Zypher rebound here, or uh, are we gonna see another newer Condor Racer uh, go through? We'll see. Yeah, well, we're about to find out. Zypher's got a pull back to back wins here. It's um, it's a little bit of a rough looking situation, but definitely very far, you know, very, very w well within the realm of possibility. Absolutely. Very doable. Yep. And I mean, we saw the full three back from uh, Dion last, last race. Certainly one thing that you have to keep in mind, um, at least when I used to race, which is like many moons ago, but I do recall like, I always found the score got into my head. I'd be like, oh man, I'm, you know, I'm down a game, it's it's stressful, I gotta win here, the pressure's on. And I find that, you know, it can get to you sometimes and it can really affect the way you play. You might end up playing a little safer or whatever. It looks like they're off. They are off indeed. Let's see what this seed has in store for our racers. Right. And then we will be seeing, uh, depending on whether this goes one or two, we're going to be moving on to the finals after this. And whoever wins this will be going up against Dion. See if he can win Revenge of the Condor. Yeah, I think Zypher might be feeling a little bit flustered. Uh, kind of taking a few odd early hits in this uh in this run so far healing up with the uh, holy water at least although um 
Revelai is probably onto that holy water maybe looking for a quick uh, boss kill or something. Oh yeah, holy water's got some really good value. Like in this instance, you know, it does five damage. So oftentimes I'll use it here because you know that you're not going to be able to uh, one cycle, so to speak, this uh, Minotaur. Um, but there's other places to use it as well. You can hang on to it. Oh, of course you can do a, a, a throw holy water, which is a very safe play here and ends up being one of the faster deep blues strats. So you aggro deep blues and you know that he's going to teleport somewhere on the, I think it's bottom three rows. No, it's on the, God, I should know it's this. It's on the, on the third row. On the third the row, right. And then no matter where he spawns though, if you've got holy water, you'll be able to get to him and kill him before uh, the queen comes to kill you, which is often the case. And uh, Zypher there doing some more RTMP strats, waiting around to see what Revelize gets. And it was a Obsidian Longsword, and Zypher likes it. Woo! Wind Mage. Please. Yeah, it's a little, a little spooky. There's some nice plate armor there. Oh, <laughs> Zypher, I think, accidentally stumbling into a trap door there. I'm not <laughs> sure she was able to see that. Uh, worth, though. I mean... Most trap I mean, doors are good trap doors that, let you go oh, fast. <laughs> that instant plate mail, which uh, Revelize has already gotten, but it's a, it's a nice pickup. Kind of a confusing sprite, though. That green armor looks like glass, <laughs> but it's not. It's plate mail. It's fine. And this is... Uh, I'm surprised that Revelize didn't use the bomb advantage here to get some distance over uh, Zypher. Zypher does not have a bomb, so has to do the slow... Uh, Coral Rift fight well, and uh, Coral Honestly, um, with a at least two damage long range weapon, I'm not sure walking forward with the bomb would have saved all that much time. Uh, it's a pretty fast phase one with a weapon like a like an obsidian longsword. All right, that's fair. Yeah. So you know, I think uh, I'm I understand the you know the decision to hold on to the bomb in case that bomb ends up making the difference when you get to the Necronancer, because That's you true. have no idea how many bombs you're going to find in the rest of the season. And especially since you're through Zone 2. Zone 2 is generally the bomb zone, where you get most of your bombs for the run. And uh, yeah, that's a that's a really good point. I really thought Revelize dropped the beat there and was in a lot of trouble with that uh, Obsidian weapon, um, but it was just a really late move. So for those who may not know, Obsidian, the way it works is it works off your coin multiplier, which is that number at the bottom. Whatever your coin multiplier is, is how much damage it's going to do. So uh, as you kill enemies, it's kind of like a like a chain you would have in like a dance game or uh, like a uh, guitar for, hero or something uh, like that. Is, um, yeah, it does require a lot of awareness with um, oh, you know, that respect to... was really clutch for Zypher there. Yeah, like Obsidian does, uh, you know, it's it's strong. You know, obviously having three damage is really strong. Uh, it's stronger than having like the two damage of Titanium. But um, the fact that it's very old damage means you have to be really aware of your situation and aware of how much your damage, um, how much damage your weapon is outputting. Yeah, there's that ring of becoming. <laughs> the the, the races are nearly synced up. Yeah, this uh, is like beat for beat. This jumping is down great. before one at pretty much identical times. Nice play by Revelize to bomb that and gets the Blast Helm. Seven bombs in a Blast Helm is a very good situation oh, right now yeah, for that... Revelize. That's going to allow him to speed up way faster than uh, than Zypher can, and the use of... Oh, it. but Zypher... Finds... A... On the flip side, finding Obsidian Rapier, which is one of the fastest weapons in the game. Certainly oh, faster than but... an Obsidian uh, Longsword. So that is that is going to create a very interesting setup here. And I think... I mean, Revelize now just needs to use this uh, Blast Helm as much as possible. They are, though, beat for beat, dropping down to 4-2 at the exact same time. So this is going to be very close. You'll watch as they both sort of seek their way through this level, uh, using their builds to their advantage to see how fast they can get through it. Seeing a little bit extra speed from Zypher here, some slight farming from Revelize, um, but it's still neck and neck. It's extremely close here. Well, was Zypher taking a teleport monkey, but lucking out and not getting thrown way far back. Um, but again, the first pretty down much three. beat for beat. Yeah, just slightly ahead, maybe about four beats ahead of of Revelize, and there is an urn there, but I think at this point it's not worth, maybe if you had the Blast Helm, because I mean, oh, yeah, I guess that makes sense. Grab that might, get a little extra damage here, might save you a couple beats killing guys. 
seeing a little bit different pathing here, and that was a very empty room for Revelize, which gives, uh, I think, oh my god, that bomb! Whatever, oh, what I was that, a Pixie? Revelize, uh, taking lead again. But they, slightly, they're so both down close. on Dead Ringer. Who's got the better Dead Ringer strats? Looks like they're both gonna do roughly the same strats. Honking all four bells, getting in over at the, uh, oh, nicely done by... Uh, I think I, I, the Blast Helm is going to give Revelize the edge. Yeah, uh, that Blast Helm. Assuming, assuming that both racers uh, have equal quality lures, yep. the instant detonation for those bombs is going to pay off here. Yeah, absolutely. You'll see that uh, Revelize gets to phase two of this fight a little bit faster than Zypher, but man, do we ever have a race here. Yeah, luring plus uh, you need a little bit of help with the way in which the Necrodancer teleports. For the most part, uh-oh. Oh, Revelize is getting Zypher frozen there. Ahead. And Zypher might have the slight lead. They're both at four. There's two more hits remaining for the Necrodancer for both. A bad teleport. And oh, I think it's oh, going to be Revelize, but I don't know. I this is it, super close. It looks like Zypher to me. Oh, for me, it was Revelize. That was incredibly close. We're going to have to leave that one to the refs here. And looking at the dot done, which is typically what we go by. Oh, my God. I can't believe this. Folks, are you ready for the results? Because I don't know if I can handle this. Zypher dot D dot Duns at 6 minutes 46 seconds, which is an insanely fast race. 6.46 and Revelize dot Ds at 6.48. Zypher by less than 2 seconds takes game 4. Wow. One bad lure on Revelize was all it took. That was so close. That was insanely close. I loved that. <laughs> oh my god. So that is confirmed victory for Zypher. We're going to another game five. Can you believe this? I mean, this tournament is just going on and on, but I don't care because these races are hype. That was insane. That was so, so good. All right, Zypher making things very interesting with that super close race. Now, just a reminder for people, because this comes up every single time, in-game time does not matter. We don't count it because there's all kinds of weird things that factor in to in-game time, whether you take trap doors more often, if, you, uh, if your computer has a little harder time generating the next level that's going to all impact that clock time, the in-game time. We use that for things like world record runs and, and, and speed runs on the leaderboards. But in terms of racing, we go with our Necrobot, um, which if you guys don't know what Necrobot is, it's super cool. You should check it out. It's a, it's a racing bot that we have that kind of replaces sort of SRL, if you're familiar with SRL. It uh, allows for a place for people to race and uh, it's really awesome. It was built by Ink Nun and it's straight up amazing. I love it. And it's really uh, helpful the community. In this context, but, uh, you know, overall relevant to the whole squirreliness of in-game time. I discovered, um, while running story mode runs, uh, that for multi-character runs, if you submit your time at the end of a single character run, the time it takes to connect to the leaderboard and submit your run gets counted into the in-game time. No way. Yeah, it's, it's, really, uh, it's really frustrating. It actually happened with my Cadence World Record run, because that was part of the story run. And I started Melody and discovered that my in-game time was, for some reason, 30 seconds higher than where the Cadence run had left off. Weird. So that only works with things like story and all characters? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Hmm. Well, that's interesting. I guess that means don't... don't submit? Yeah, I, I shouldn't have submitted that run. I hate that run. <laughs> Oh, yeah, I don't want your, the world like... record with a, with a mindless build like that. Someone please take it from me. It's like a an insane like leaping courage run. Yeah, grab that lunging boots and go for it. And go to and go to town. Shades bolt. It is a bit of an edge case space cow, but uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean. With the extensive testing that we've been doing with Condor and all the speed running and all the Twitch stuff of his game. There's a pretty right, so long list final of race weirdness. Underway. Right away we see a Titanium Dagger, a really good um, early game weapon. Nice. It's better than that broadsword you typically see in 1-1, so yeah, I'm a fan. Oh, yeah, for sure. 
<laughs> Everyone knows about the 1-1 one, one base broad sword. Yep, it's either that or leather armor pretty much every time you see the black chest, so. Oh, is Zypher gonna check right here? Yep, okay, so finds the same trap door that Revelize did. Man, I didn't I didn't see, I didn't catch a glimpse of if there was a chest hidden in that red bat cave. There was not? I don't think so, um, but I really didn't get to check either. But it could have been good if it was. Sometimes that's the difference maker. One thing that's kind of interesting meta in terms of the sort of roguelike racing is, oh no, that bounce back on the trap. Hits Revelize, does not hear, hit Zypher. Oh, oh and Revelize, Revelize goes, goes for, for a throw, throw to on the splash hop and it not, does that not pan out. That is a really risky play. Um, maybe did see the red bat. What I was gonna say um, is a different meta is that you see with, oh, Zypher. That you see with roguelikes is uh, that Sometimes what you want to do is if you think you're the worst racer, you do things that create differences between the builds. And so if you think you're maybe the worst racer, instead of just jumping down the trapdoor, if there's a um, if there's an item in that red bat closet, you actually uh, go fight for it and see what you get. It might be the difference maker. It might give you something that's enough of a build to help carry you. Yeah, it's that's one. You see that also with the boss chests as well, where you'll grab uh, items out of the boss chests that are different than your opponent to see if you can uh, maybe get that sort of main item that makes the difference. And that is an obsidian bow. Meh. <laughs> yeah, not really what you want to see. Uh, a slow, bow, slow weapon. You know, it's a big favorite. It's really popular among uh, casual players who are just, you know, kind of learning their way around the game because it lets you stay very far away from enemies and pick them off safely from a distance but in speedrunning long range weapons are generally not the best because it means that when you know in, in many many situations where you just want to move forward you know walk towards the exit uh you're instead going to be attacking enemies that you couldn't give a darn about um like halfway across the map instead of moving yeah, and, and that can snag you in some pretty bad ways, especially because oftentimes you're not looking that far ahead, which is really the case with Speaking which, I'm, I'm really surprised Zypher is skipping over the Obsidian Broadsword and electing to stick with this bow. That is weird. Um, the plus one damage with Obsidian, though, is really nice. It makes trapdoors a lot easier. What just happened there? Did you see that? Zypher, like, jumped a bunch of beats? At the beginning of that 2-3, there was, like, a... It was like a, I don't know what happened. Very interesting. But an Obsidian Cat for Revelize is a much nicer uh, pickup compared to the bow. Yeah, that's, uh, I've already said it before, but I think the cat's ability, you know, the move attack ability on the cat makes it um, arguably the best weapon in the game for speedrunning. Yeah, for sure. And lots of health for both our racers, so they should be able to push this build a little faster considering all that health. That plus one damage, though, has worked out nicely for... Uh, and for Zypher. Yeah, I mean, I think we're seeing here like how much stronger a weapon like the Obsidian Cat is uh, over the Obsidian Bow, because uh, Revelize had, uh, took an early death to the Glass Shopkeeper and had to reset, and uh, it's already dead even again. Yeah, we're actually seeing the effect of uh, luck here, where there's the Obsidian Cat for Zypher, and actually Revelize in the boss chest saw the Obsidian Bow, so it was kind of like a weird weapon swap that we just witnessed. Zypher does very early stairs. Oh, okay. Does that make the difference? If you do early stairs, do you get like a little speed boost on the next floor? Because that's what I'm seeing. Okay, and uh, yeah, Revelize uh, is going for a minus cap. Could potentially be very fast, but leads to situations like this where you're just opening up all the walls and oh, this is a swarm and a half. And this is only you like crazy. It's only three oh, two. Oh, these yetis. The oh. Oh and no! The cap. How much the damage did that guy do? Do you three full hearts? The miners kept digging out that wall that was blocking that yeti, just keep you know keeping them away. What uh, the crap! How much opening, damage? Opening the oh, floodgates, and really okay. crushing him. Dang! So now yeah, the miners cap gets Zypher. him killed. Wow! And the yeah, the ball is totally in Zypher's court here. Um, she's got all the time. Gigantic lead, three zone lead. Almost. Yep. Grab that blast helm. Play uh, everything safe. I, that, I am. I very much disagree with the decision to go with monocle over blast helm. Blast helm 
renders you immune to a lot of zone 4 hazards and gives you a really handy panic button, especially with 12 bombs on deck. Yeah, I'm going to agree with you, though I do know, um, especially with Zone 4, there's some value to the monocle just because of all the statues. You can see all of the stuff, but I think you, you really only keep the monocle if you're not satisfied with your build, and I feel like Zypher's build is pretty top shelf, and actually it's about to be even better. I'm assuming Zypher's going to go and kill that shopkeeper. That is a very nice uh, shop. I mean... Oh, yeah, that is that really is good. That is real juicy. I don't know about keeping the Ring of Courage or not. For me, I don't find it to be too much of a help. Um, it's more go fast, but maybe die, because I'll get myself in bad spots. But um, And it seems like Zypher agrees, but I know for some people it's actually safer. Yeah, I, I personally, I think I would like to take that Ring of Courage with this build, but um, I I can understand. Uh, Especially with Cat. If it's like a spear or something, it's like, okay, yeah, definitely. Or longsword. Pushing a little hard here, although, I mean, it's pretty safe other than goo. Goo is the big issue here. If you get surrounded by goo and you don't pop your shield spell early enough, it's a problem. But, I mean, it's still... You have time. But, again, that's where that panic button would have come into play. In terms oh, of there's the, a fourth uh, potion just to really seal the safety on this run. <laughs> yeah. The troll walk pig there though. But... Nice. Yep. All right. I think I think Zypher's okay. The double bomb just in case it's like a Minotaur or something like that. Careful not to hit the uh, Ghulam. And uh, yeah, this is. Uh... I, I, I'd be very impressed if the uh, if she managed to find the Minotaur in some form. Oh yeah, that's hard to do. It's a very good point. But you never know. There might be one just lurking on the other side of that door. I mean, yeah, sometimes the game just decides to break itself. Sometimes it completely deletes your uh, your fourth three exit altogether. Steak can tell you all about that. <laughs> yeah, tell us, Steak. And going for that phasing just to completely solidify, this build could not be safer. This is, like, top-level deathless build currently. Fat Cadence is going to watch as... Uh, other cadence makes this a very easy fight. Do you see how the fat cadence has got like, it looks like a backwards hat? With like the little, it's like a little tuft of hair coming out of the like, that's what I see it anyways. Like a trucker hat backwards? I don't know. <laughs> anyway. Uh, yeah, so this looks like it's pretty much curtains, a somewhat anticlimactic finish, but I'm sure Zypher is very pleased with uh, this result, especially after um, having two match points to uh, Revelize there. Hmm, dot done before actually completing. No, I'm just, I'm just kidding. Got it. So yeah, that's GG, go. that's, Zypher that's, moving on. Yep, yeah, that's the two consecutive wins Zypher needed to stay alive, and uh, 